Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Ngayong hapon po ay magkaroon po tayo muna review bago tayo mag-discuss ng panibagong topic about courts of heaven. Nung last week, ang ating panag-usapan ay divine restraining order. We talk about the principle of divine restraint. Question. Why did God put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden of Eden knowing that Adam might be tempted to eat from it? Bakit nga ba? Eh alam naman ng Diyos na matutukso si Adan at Eva. Alam niya na magkakasala. Kaya laging sinasabi ng mga tao, eh bakit pa niya nilagay yun? Hindi natin naiintindihan, ang purpose pala ni Lord is what? To restrain Adam from abusing the power and the authority given by God. Kasi ang principle po, bago ang Diyos magbigay ng power, authority sa isang nilalang, dapat kaya niya itong kontrolin. Kaya niya itong i-restrain. Because he can, God cannot use a person that he cannot restrain. So yan po yung principle. Kasi si Adam, Adam's authority over the Garden of Eden was rooted in his ability to obey to the restraining principle that God put him under. So ano yung restraining principle? Huwag mong kainin yung tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So yun yung uh, basihan ng authority na binigay sa kanya ni Lord, may limit, may limitasyon. Kaya sinabi niya sa Genesis chapter 3, po, In the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Ibig sabihin, the true spiritual authority na ibinigay sa kanya ng Diyos ay mawawala sa kanya o mamamatay or it will end when the divine restraining principle is broken. Alam natin yung kwento. Nung siya ay tinukso at nag-give in sa tukso, nakuha ni Satan yung, ano, yung authority na binigay sa kanya ng Diyos. Let's see the example of divine restraint in the life of Samson. Remember, the mother of Samson was given a uh, restraint. Huwag iinom ng alak at huwag ikakain ng unclean foods. Ganun din yung batang Samson, huwag gugupitan. Okay? Why? Because the power of God ay naandun saan? Sa kanyang buhok. Okay? So, Samson's supernatural strength was never connected to his sex sexual chastity. Kasi nga, marami siyang karelasyon. Pero kahit marami siyang karelasyon, ano pa nangyari? Hindi nawawala yung kanyang power. Bakit? Kasi hindi naman yun, kasi yung power connected sa kanyang hair. Nawala lang yung power kay Samson nung ginupit ni Delilah yung kanyang ano? Kanyang buhok. The principle is what? Satan always assign a Delilah to any man or woman of destiny. Kaya babantayan natin. Sabi ni Lord Acton, power tends to corrupt. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Another example is in the divine restraint on the life of Job. In Job chapter 1, verse 9, Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hand and his possession have increased in the land. So, tinan niyo po. Ang divine restraining sa buhay ni Job is the hedge. It's just like a wall, a spiritual wall na inilagay ni, ni Lord kay Job. Kaya kahit si Satanas at mga kampo niya, hindi siya pwedeng magalaw. Okay? His house and all that he has, it's all protected. So alam natin yung kwento. Na wala lang yung protection na yan nung nakakuha si, si Satan ng pwedeng iakusa kay Job. Okay? So, we know the principle na si Lord ang naglalagay ng ano, divine restraining order sa atin. Sa kay Jesus naman. Ano ang restraint, divine restraint in the life of Jesus? 
Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you that the Son of Man can do nothing of himself, but what he see the Father do, for whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. John 5.19 Ibig sabihin, ang restraint na binigay ng Ama kay Jesus ay hindi niya pwedeng gamitin ang kanyang pagiging Diyos. Remember yung kanyang kaibigan na si Lazarus may sakit? He cannot do by himself. Bakit? Wala namang instruction ang ama na pagalingin niya ang sakit ni Lazarus. In fact, ang order sa kanya ng Diyos, hayaan mong mamatay and then pagkamatay, saka mo buhayin. Kaya tinan nyo doon sa Philippians 2.6 which is yours in Christ Jesus who though he was in a form of God, he did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. Ibig niya sabihin, kung siya ay nasa lupa, he is 100% man. He did not use yung kanyang pagiging Diyos. Kaya nung siya ay tinutukso ni, ano, ni Satan, ang gusto mangyari ni Satan is what? To release Jesus from his divine restraint. Kaya sabi niya, uh, gawin mo itong, itong bato na tinapay. Pwede yon. Kaso lang, kapag ginawa niya yon, magiging ano, mababiolate niya yung divine restraint na ibinigay ng Ama kay Jesus. Sabi ng Ama, gagawin mo lang yung nakikita mong ginagawa ko. At sasabihin mo lang yung mga bagay na sinasabi ko sa iyo. And I also believe na ang restraint na yan na nakay Jesus noon nung siya nasa lupa, the same restraint na ibinigay ng Diyos sa bawat isang mananampalataya. A divine restraining order or protective order is an order issued by the courts of heaven to protect a person of destiny, a business, a nation, or a kingdom citizen in a situation involving clear and present danger to the preordained purposes of God. Mga kapatid, this is the grace of God. Kahit hindi pa natin alam ang court of heaven, hindi pa natin alam itong divine restraining order, na kapag alam, pag nakita ng Diyos na tayo ay mapapahamak, siya ay nagbibigay ng ano, restraining order or protection sa atin. Hindi lang sa atin, even sa yung business. Kaya kung ngayon na naunawaan ko ito, o ako yung tinawag lang nila na mag-business, ito ang pinakamagandang pagkakataon na mag-business. Bakit? You will have a protective order from heaven. The enemy cannot touch your business. And the business will be blessed. That's the promise of God. A nation. Oh, can you imagine if there is a divine restraining order over the nation? Paano makakapasok ang drugs? Paano makakapasok ang criminality, ang rebellion, ang terrorism sa bansa natin? Nothing. Okay? So, we need to understand how this divine restraining order na go-operate sa buhay natin, sa buhay ng negosyo, at sa buhay ng isang bansa. Now, merong purpose ang divine restraining order. Ini-issue ito ng korte para sa mga uh, may mga layunin siya. Una, yung tinatawag na protecting territory proteksyonan ang teritory. Tinan nyo po doon sa buhay ni Samuel at Israel. Nung hanggat buhay si Samuel, ang Philistine ay hindi makalapit. At ang lahat ng property na nakuha ng Philistine, nakuha ng Israel. Nakuha niyo po. Nung namatay na si Samuel, the Philistine was able to start to ano, to mapasok uli ang Israel. Sa Pilipinas naman, we have dispute in the north, in the South China Sea, at may dispute tayo sa south. Okay? Nagpal tayo ng kaso sa Permanent Court of Arbitration sa The Hague. Nanalo tayo, but the problem is, this court has no police power to implement the ruling. So, anong ginawa ng China? ang ng Chinese Communist Party. Kinamkam yung loop, yung Scarborough Shoal. Kinuha nila, nilagyan nila ng ano, ng artificial island. At ang masakla pa, yung lupang itinambak galing sa Zambales. So in other words, 
uh, the island really owns by the Philippines. Okay? So, anong ibig sabihin nito? The Ecclesia now can petition to the Court of Heaven and to ask for what? a res divine restraining order to protect us, to protect the territory at maisoli sa atin ang territory na yan. Yan ang pwede natin gawin. Okay? Ano pa? Restraining and godly behavior. Si Saul has been hunting David for, so for years because Saul wants to kill David. Why? Because there is a verdict of hell that David cannot become king. Okay? So, in 1 Samuel chapter 19 verse 20, inutusan ni uh, Saul yung grupo ng mga sundalo niya para ipapatay si David. Eh David kasama ni Samuel. Pagdating nila doon sa lugar ni Samuel, ito mga tao na ito na sundalo na gustong pumatay kay David, they start to prophesy like a prophet. And then, nalaman ni Saul, nagpadala uli hanggang pangatlong beses nagpadala siya. Same thing that happens. Panghuli, siya na ang pumunta. So, mabigat. Pagdating niya ron, he prophesied. And the whole day, he prophesied na nakahubad. You see? He became fool, like a fool. Okay? Because what? He's trying to violate the restraining order. Kaya si Lord, pwede siyang magbigay ng restraining order para ano? To restrain the ungodly behavior. Ano pa? Restraining enemies of the gospel, nung si Paul, kasama niyang proconsul, sinishira niya ng gospel, yun naman si Elimas, isang uh, witch, isang magician, trying to stop Paul. And Paul prayed and Elimas experienced a temporary uh, pagkabulag, blindness. Okay? So, ganun din. Anyone, who becomes enemy of the gospel, God can what? Release what? Restraining. Even restraining Satan, in Revelation chapter 20, si Lord ang naglagay kay Satan doon sa bottomless pit. So mga kapatid, pagkatandaan nyo, ang away natin ay hindi direkta laban kay Satanas. Hindi mo siya pwedeng labanan ng toe-to-toe. Uh, -to -to or uh, combat talo ka wala kang power remember we were created a little lower than the angel but you can restrain satan by going to the court of heaven and let god restrain him okay so yan yung uh, purpose niyan restraining order on god's servant first king chapter 13 isang unknown prophet pinapunta ni lord kay king jeroboam to prophesy against the altar of Baal. Kasi si Jeroboam nagtayo ng golden calf. Nung pagkatao siya mag-prophesy, ay nakatalikod yung prophet at gustong saktan ni Jeroboam yung prophet. Suddenly, the hands of the king froze mid-air. So, nagbakaawa yung hari at pinag-pray ng prophet at gumaling. At sabi nung hari, sabi niya, sama ka muna sa palasyo ko para kumain, para pakainin kita. Sabi niya, kahit pa ibigay mo sa akin ng kalahati ng kaharian mo, hindi ko gagawin yan. Kasi meron akong divine restraining order from God na pagpunta ko rito, hindi ako kakain at iinom dito. At kahit yung dinaanan ko papasok, hindi ko nadadaanan pabalik. Okay? So, he went away. Kung siya yung way, pauwi na siya, palabas na siya, hinabol siya ng isang matandang propeta. Nalaman yung kanyang restraining order at nagsinungaling itong propeta na ito at sabi niya, propeta din ako, pwede ka nang kumain at uminom ng tubig. Oh. So, naniwala naman yung prope batang propeta. So, ano nangyari? Pag uwi niya, napatay siya ng leon. You see? You cannot violate the restraining order na binigay sa iyo ng May mga uh, servant of God na binigyan ni Lord ng special calling na merong uh, restraining order silang sinusunod. Okay? Next, restraining the spirit of premature death. Acts 27, this is where yung barko na sinasakyan ni Paul ay lumubog. 
But then the angel came at sabi niya, hindi kayo mamamatay. Okay? So, God also restrained uh, yung spirit of premature death. Kaya kahit sa buhay natin, maraming pagkakataon na mamamatay na sana tayo. Even though hindi natin alam ito, the Lord, by His sovereignty, He is protecting us. Why? Because of our destiny. Okay? To restrain Mother Nature, mga kapatid, Joshua 10, 12 to 13, nung nakipaglaban si Joshua doon sa limang hari, di ba? Anong nangyari? The heavens, he asked the heavens, the sun, uh, the moon to stop from ano, rising and he start to command the sun na mag-stand still. You see? We can restrain the mother nature. Yung bagyo. Kaya nga yung National Disasters, Disaster Risk Reduction Management Control. Ayan. So yan yung ahensya ng gobyerno na nagbabantay para daw i-reduce ang risk. Mga kapatid, kung alam lang ng NDRRMC na ang ikliseya ng Panginoong Isu Kristo may power to stop the bagyo, eh, tuwing may bagyo, kayo na ang tatawagin. Kayo na magpipray. O, oh, di ba? Ano pa? Restrain the righteous from sinning. Genesis 23 to 7. King Abimelech. Di ba? Nagustuhan niya si Sarah. Kasi ang pakilala sa kanya ay kapatid ni Abraham. Okay? So, nung dinala niya sa palasyo si Sarah, nung gabing yun na naginip siya, kinausap siya ng Diyos. Okay? God protected King Abimelech from sinning. Ito ang pinakamagandang divine protection sa bawat isa sa atin, mga lingkod ng Diyos, na ibinibigay ni Lord to restrain us, to restrain the righteous from sinning. Ano pa? To preserve destiny of God's purpose. Luke 1, 18-20, naalala nyo, Gabriel appeared to Zacharias, the high priest, during the time, at sinabi niya na uh, may magbubunti si Elizabeth at magkakaroon ng anak at ang pangalan niya na ay John siya ang maghahanda ng daan ng pagdating ng Mesiyas. But Zacharias, he start to uh, open up his mouth and start to declare unbelief. Kaya anong ginawa ng, ni Gabriel? He has to what? Restrain Zacharias from opening his mouth of unbelief, or declaring unbelief. Because remember, life and death is in the power of the tongue. So, he remained mute hanggang siya ay ano, hanggang makapanganak si Elizabeth. Ano pa? How are we going to present our case in the court of heaven? This is the principle. Number one, get off the battlefield. Ibig sabihin, you have to change your mindset. We are not war prick anymore. Hindi na natin, hindi na po pwede yung mindset na nung lumang dispensation na we're trying to wage war against the enemy. Hindi na po pwede yun because we have to recognize the need for legal precedent to be set before we run to the battle. Before you can go to the battlefield, kinakala makakuha ka muna ng ano legal president dapat mana, manalo ka muna sa korte sa langit because we are in a conflict not in a war but in a court it is a legal battle remember Jesus put prayer in a context of a courtroom or judicial setting not in the battlefield okay si Jesus mismo nagturo ng tatlong klasing panalangin Ang unang panalangin is what the model of prayer number one is a friend-to-friend -friend model. Second is, uh, you can find it in Luke chapter 11, a son-to-a-father uh, model of prayer. Pangatlo, sabi ni Jesus in Luke 18 verse 1, I don't want you to lose heart. I don't want you to stop praying. That's why the problem of prayer is delay. Kaya sabi ni Lord, you use this third kind of prayer, now you go to the court of heaven. Why? 
because kaya hindi nasasagot ang yung mga panalangin ay dahil merong ano legal ground ang enemy. Una, meron siyang accusation sa iyo. Revelation 12:10, anong sabi niya? That the enemy is what accusing us day and night in the court of heaven. So if you don't appear in the court, accusation will not be removed in our lives. The only way that accusation to be dealt with is you need to appear in the court of heaven. Ano pa? Stand on Christ's finished work. The only way you can stand in um, the court of heaven is what? It is based on the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Okay? Without this redemptive work of our Savior, none of us can qualify to approach the courts of the Holy God. Okay? And number three, you need to repent. Because approaching the courts of heaven is, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to search our heart and to see if there's any unconfessed sin in our life. Because Jesus is our advocate. Uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. That Jesus is our advocate. Advocate means lawyer. Your defense lawyer. Eh bakit sinabi ni Lord na siya ay defense lawyer? Kasi nga ang langit ay what? Korte. So every time we repent and we confess our sin, we are going to the court of heaven at doon natin inaappropriate ang dugo ni Kristo na nabuhos doon sa krus ng Kalbaryo. And then number four, ask the court to be seated kasi hindi po pwede na magkaroon ng ano, uh, hearing ng walang judge na present. In Daniel chapter 7 verse 10 is we can see there a stream of fire issued and came out from before him a thousand thousand served him ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him and the court sat in judgment and the books were open. So this is the time we're in you need to ask the court to be seated. Okay? Approaching the court of heaven is to ask the courts of heaven be seated to hear our case. Because it is impossible to get a judicial ruling from any court of law if the court is not yet seated. That's why no courtroom trial ever proceeds until the judge had be, has been seated. Okay? So, number five, present your case with boldness. Importante yung boldness. Because, sabi ni Lord sa Hebrews 4.16, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Ang tawag namin dyan ay mercy court. Doon ka pwedeng lumapit sa korte. Lahat tayo ay pinapapasok ni Lord sa korte na kanyang biyaya o awa. Boldness is an important spiritual ingredient for approaching the throne of grace. Okay? Hindi lang boldness ang kailangan mo. Because it demonstrates our confidence in the finished work of Christ and goodness of God. Because fear actually works against us and gives the devil a legal footing against us in the courts of heaven. And then, number six, you have to wait for the spirit witness. The Spirit Himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God, Romans 8, 16. So one of the most important things we can do while we are presenting our case in the course of heaven is wait for the witness of the Holy Spirit. Hindi po pwedeng basta lang kayo magsasubmit. You have to wait and listen what the courts is saying about your petition. Okay? The Holy Spirit is the highest officer of the courts of heaven operating on the earth today. But remember also, each one of us are officers of the courts of heaven. Why? Because we are all priests of God. Jesus is our high priest after the order of Melchizedek. At lahat tayo ay ano, mga royal priesthood. So ang pwedeng mag-appear lamang doon sa korte sa langit ay yung mga priest. Kaya ang lahat ng born-again believers are what? Priest. And now, kaya nga merong open invitation para sa atin to enter to the court of heaven. And He will give you a witness in your spirit 
when the divine restraining order you're seeking has been granted. Because the Holy Spirit, ang tawag sa kanya parakletos, ang ibig sabihin, the one who uh, stand alongside, ibig sabihin, he is your legal aid. He will help you in presenting submission or petition into the courts of heaven. And then, receive the court's verdict by faith. Hindi lang boldness ang kailangan ni Lord. One of the ingredients, the legal requirements in going to the courts of heaven is faith. Because it is impossible to please God without faith. Okay? So, no legal case inside any courtroom is ever considered complete until a final verdict has been rendered. So, when the verdict has been rendered and received, and I encourage you to have a copy. Pastor, wala man papel. Yes, in the spirit, you can have a copy. Like for example, if there is an accusation against you, you go to the court of heaven and you nullify this accusation by repenting and confessing. And then after you confess, you ask the court to issue you a divorce paper, a divorce from that particular sin. Okay? And then, pagbaba mo di sa lupa, mayro kang hawak na ano, na papel. This is now where you ano, uh, tawag doon, uh, you make a uh, pag inatake ka ng kaaway, you remind him that you already have a verdict from the courts of heaven. Receive by faith. This is why it's important for you to be persistent until the courts of heaven has rendered a righteous verdict on your behalf. Okay? Number eight, reinforce your righteous verdict daily through thanksgiving. Tandaan niyo po, pinakamahalaga dito ay yung thanksgiving. Because one of the most powerful weapons in the kingdom of God is thanksgiving. Why? Because thanksgiving, thanksgiving places us in an attitude of continual praise over what the Lord has already done for us. Thanksgiving feeds your spirit with hopeful anticipation. And thanksgiving feeds the spirit of expense, expectancy inside of you. Kaya 1 Thessalonians 5.18 In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Lastly, King Jehoshaphat. Ang alam natin, na naging tagumpay si King Jehoshaphat dahil sa praise and worship. Mga kapatid, aralin niyo po ang Biblia. The Second Chronicles chapter 20. In verse 11, ang sabi po roon, hindi dahil sa praise and worship. King Jehoshaphat went to the court of heaven and asked for judgment against these tribes na gustong umatake sa kanila. Okay? And the prophet prophesied at ang sabi roon, uh, tomorrow we will go to the battle because the battle is mine. Maliwanag na sinabi, the battle is mine. Sabi ni Lord. Siya ang ano, um, uh, makikipaglaban. So, before there was a victory, Jehoshaphat was able to get a legal precedent in heaven or atol or verdict from heaven against his enemy. Kaya kinabukasan, ang inilagay niya sa unahan ay mga worship team. Bakit? Kasi hindi niya pwedeng ilagay yung sundalo. Kasi pag nilagay niyo yung sundalo, ibig sabihin, he's trying to fight in his own strength. So kaya, an expression ng kanyang faith, o sige, ang ilalagay ko rito ay ano, mga musician and worship team. And you have to pray to the Lord and sing unto the Lord, give thanks for his, his love endures forever. Yan yung kanilang inaawit. Pagdating nila ron, pansin ninyo, tapos na ang laban. It's not because of the praise and worship. It's because of what? The judgment that was issued by the court of heaven. So, yan po ang walong principle sa pagpipresent ng case sa divine counsel or sa court of heaven. 